Um, just to recollect what we were discussing last week, um, Swami is uh, talking about creation itself, I would say, is talking about the Swarupa and the Swabhava of the Paramatma. And in that sense, in that context, uh, he introduced the concept of the elements multiplying. Um, into many more, and um, I think that's what we were discussing um, when we were, I think we closed about the 25 principles. Um, I think there were some questions on that. Maybe we should, I don't know whether we should discuss the first chapter of Prashnotravahini, which basically covers that concept to some extent, or we should defer it to some other point in time. I'll, I'll request what the participant would like to do. Based on that, we can proceed. Otherwise, we can just continue with the uh, Gita Vahini itself. Maybe we'll continue where we are left off. Learning. Maybe we'll read the Gita Vaini and then we'll see what others say and then we'll take from there. I'll just read this one again then, the slide. Yes, please. Krishna, tell me, what is the relationship between your Swabhava and the Swarupa Prakriti, the objective world? I have told you already that the five elements, earth, water, fire, air and sky are my swabhava, my attributes. What is this objective world except the combination of the five elements? What else can you call it? Krishna, without the five, nothing can exist in this world, is it not? Then how can I deny them? Existence is bound with them. When you accept the five elements, you have to agree to the fivefold proliferation of each element, making in all 25 tattvas or principles. Only four elements, earth, water, fire, and air, are evident and perceptible, but ether or sky is the basis for all. So too, manas, mind, buddhi, intellect, chittam, memory, Ahankaram, ego, are all four cognized by experience, but the antakarana, inner instrument, which is their base, can only be inferred. All things of which we are aware are but manifestations of a thing of which we are unaware. They derive their strength and support from the unseen. That unseen basis of which you are unaware is I myself, the Atma, all are based on me. Thank you, Kalyani. Um, so I think maybe we should, because uh, the reality is that Swami wrote the Prashnotra Vahini in parallel with the Gita Vahini. Maybe to, because so that, you know, people may have questions and that's why he's sort of addressed that, I would say. Um, I don't think you, you may not be able to project it. Would you be able to? Um, Chapter one of Prashnatra and is it possible or? I, I just will take me a minute. I'll just have to download the Vahini itself. Okay, okay, don't worry then. Um, maybe I don't know whether I should uh, project. Uh... Did we do the translation in Telugu, this paragraph? Yes, Auntie, if we... you want to, we can do it if you wish. Uh, we... no. 
it's for the we companies. Had done, we had done the translation. I don't think we found anything. Yeah. Uh, the translation is reasonably good. Thank you, Kalyani. Yeah, so for everyone's benefit, Swami um, wrote a Vahini called Prashno Vahini uh, in parallel with Gita Vahini. Uh, and uh, it did not have too many chapters. But the first chapter in the Prashnotra Vahini deals with what Swami is talking about, this five elements becoming 25 principles. So I thought it would maybe nice for everyone to at least uh, discuss it a bit. Mm -hmm. And it uh, gives much more information to us. Um, maybe I, we can read Kalyani. Auntie, you have the Telugu with you? Or? Yeah, I have got the Telugu. Okay, so then we can do it. So, Kalyani, you can read, start reading. Thank if you, it's I, okay. Pardon? I think the, it's just cut off. Just the first page is cut off. I'll just read from the book itself. Okay, okay otherwise, you want me to project? The know. other pages, these ones are okay. It's just the first page. So, I have, I can read off the book and then. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I don't. Which chapter is it? First, first chapter, is it? Yes, Auntie. Just the first okay. chapter. Okay, yeah, yeah. The body and the Indriyas. Question. Why is this human body said to be composed of the five elements, the Panjabhutas? Answer. Since it is a product of the five elements. Question. What exactly are the five elements? Answer. Akasha, Vayu, Agni, Jala, and Prithvi, which are usually referred to as ether, air, fire, water, and earth. Question. From where did these originate? Answer. Each subsequent element originated from the previous one. Question. Which is the cause of the first and therefore of all the five? Answer. Brahman, the unmodified, the fixed, the basis. Okay, I think they will stop there, Kalyani. Uh, so, yeah. so, everyone, Swami, this Vahini is written in a question and answer form. Um, as you can see, Swami has asked some basic questions. I will ask Auntie to read in Telugu and we'll translate it as well. Okay. Manava Dehamu Mari Indrayamulu, body and the senses. Senses. ఈ మానవ దేహమును పాంచ భౌతిక మందురు కదా ఎందువలన దిస్ బాడీ హ్యూమన్ బాడీ ఇస్ బీయింగ్ సెడ్ టు బి ఆఫ్ మేడ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫైవ్ ఎలిమెంట్స్ వై వై ఇస్ ఇట్ సో ఆన్సర్ పంచభూతములతో కూడి ఇండుట చేత దీనికి పేరు వచ్చినది బికాజ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ మేడ్ ఆఫ్ కంబైండ్ ఇస్ మేడ్ ఆఫ్ ద కాంబినేషన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫైవ్ ఎలిమెంట్స్ this name has come about yeah panchabhutamulu evi what are the five elements aakashamu vayuvu agni jalamu prithvi they are the space wind fire water and earth evi ekkadu nundi vachinavi from where did they come evi ఒక్కొక్క భూతము నుండి ఒక్కొక్కటి వచ్చినవి ఈచ్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ ఎలిమెంట్స్ కేమ్ ఫ్రమ్ అనదర్ వన్ అన్నిటికీ మూలాధారమైనది వాట్ ఇస్ ద వాట్ ఇస్ ద మోస్ట్ బేసిక్ ఫౌండేషన్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ నిర్వికార అచల పరిపూర్ణ బ్రహ్మము ద బ్రహ్మన్ విచ్ డస్ నాట్ అండర్గో చేంజెస్ విచ్ ఇస్ అన్మూవింగ్ and it is complete yeah she stopped there yes aunty yeah okay hope so far i think it is clear to everybody i hope is everyone is okay yeah we can forward i up. think this is i think everyone generally is familiar with it yeah everybody hmm you can proceed kalyani so keep reading the prashnotra vahini yes please we'll read the full chapter 
at least until the 25 principles are covered. Yeah. Okay. Un Uncle, shall I read the one that you we had done with the trans? Yes. Like, yes, should I read that one instead? Yeah, you can do whichever. Yes. Okay. So whichever is can be easier for you. So that way you don't have to do the translation, I think, because then it's already we have the yeah. Okay. So um... okay, thank you. But you can just read the English. Yeah, maybe you don't need. Should I just to... read the translated? Version? Yeah, from yeah, what we have done. Yes, please. What is the relationship between the human body and the five elements? Answer: From the Pada Brahman, all the Mahats were born. From them, the Akasha. From the Akasha, the Vayu. From Vayu, the fire. From the fire, the water. From water, the earth. Due to the combining of these, the human body has come to be. Okay, I think we'll stop here. Maybe we'll discuss and then. Um, so, Sairam, everyone. So, Swami is uh, saying that from the Parabrahman, the Mahat principles were born. From the Mahat, the space, space came to be. From the space, the wind, the wind, from the wind, the fire, from fire, the water, and from water, earth. And through the combina combina combination of these, the permutations and combination of these five elements, the human body has come to be. So this is what Swami is saying. Um, yes, Sister Aruna. The, yes, I am. The Mahat is referred to five elements. Am I right, please? No, no. Mahat is Buddhi. Mahat is Mahabuddhi. First born was Mahabuddhi. From then, Akasha, Akasha to Vayu, like that it goes. All Mahat was born from Mahat, the Mahat, uh, Aruna, yeah. Mahat means the uh, most intellect. intellect was born. The first intellect was born from um, Parabrahma. That's Mahat. You can call it Mahabuddhi. Mahat was born from the, all the Mahat was born. Yeah, is there Mahat. any other expression, Arun? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't know whether it's um, you know, Mahat means that something which is great. Great. The great great upon the five elements, you mean? Be, but, sister, five, before the five elements were born, Mahat was born. Mahat was born. See, the thing according, is... Uh, Arun, according, yes, to, according to Sankhya Yoga, Sankhya philosophy, yes. first born was Mahat, Mahabuddhi, they call it. Only yes. the Ankara and the individuation, all those things was born. All the Mahat was born from them, the Akasha. So Mahat is something different, yes. I don't know how to ask. Okay. Parabrahma, all the Mahat. What is Mahat then mean? It was uh, Mahabuddhi. Oh, that's what is told in uh, in philosophy. It's called Mahabuddhi. So that is referred to Brahman then? Uh, the Brahma, the, who is the creator kind of thing? No, no. I don't know. From Parabrahman. Param Brahm, Parabrahman. All the Mahat was born. Mahat was born. First Mahat was born. So, Only take it as one thing, one aspect. So From in between um, Parabrahman and the five elements, there is a Mahat is there. That's Don't confuse yourself. First Parabrahman, then Mahat, and then. Then five elements. Yeah, in between. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm talking about. So what uh, the one more question? One is Mahat. The second question part of it is: Is there is anything? Everything born you know, the five elements. Everything is in the world is composed of these five elements, one or the other way. Exactly. Am I right? My thinking. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. right. Thanks. Everything is Panchabhuta. Everything, not only human body. It's referred to everything, even a, anything in, you see in the world. It, it's a it, Composed. It's one of the Mahabhutas, at least one. One, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah.
Should, should we go on then? Yes, please. Question. The relationship of these five elements in the general world, in the human body, in which form do they exist? Answer. Each of the five elements have taken five forms and they are called panchakas and they fill this body. The first element of akasha, who are the panchakas that exist in that? Answer. The nyata, knower, mind, manas, buddhi, chittam, ahankaram. These are the five, these five are the akasha panchakas. Okay, so Swami is talking about how the the space principle or the sky principle mm. has formed certain uh, elements or say certain principles uh, which he has listed here. So it's nyata, mind, buddhi, chittam, and ankara. Okay, so what is in our mind, either the mental space or Chitta Kasha, what Swami has called it, is comprised, it contains these five principles which are made of space. Uh, Sai Ramarun, this Nata, this knower, knower here it refers to the individual person who knows about his own mind, Chitta, Hankara, and um, Buddhi, all these things. Who is the knower? Knower is the Kshetragna. Here you mean. The See, one... Yanti, huh. Based on what Swami spoke in Gita Vahini, which we read, hmm. Nyata is the Antakarana. Antakarana. Hmm. Which is the basis for all the other four. Yeah. Which... So, antakarana. Anta, the Antakarana, we have mind, Buddhi, Chitta, Mahankara. Yeah. yeah. So, that... According to Swami, what Swami told in the Gita Vahini, these are dependent, the, just the way space is the support for all the other four elements. Yeah, yeah. That is right. Antakarana is the support for all the other four. Yeah. So I think the nyata, the knower in us, the one mm. who is cognizes. Mm. Um, I think yeah, from yeah, below, is, below is, you, atma, atma or witness. That's what yes, we say. Yeah, yeah. The witness, witness consciousness. I think that we have we have discussed, and I think that's what we have our conclusion was. Mm. So which basically the, the one that supports these other four fac faculties is the antakarana or the nata. Yeah. Because that itself is a karana only, you know, the jivatma is all, only an extension of yeah. just taking on some upadhi, which the paramatma uses. Say. So I think that's okay. So Swami includes this witness consciousness as in, in which all these four mana, buddhi, ankara, chitta, Question about the Mahat, maybe we should discuss some because sometime back Swami had talked about the Vijnana Mai Kosha. Mm. It has, you know, the, it has a, its head is Shraddha, its uh, wings are Satyam and Ritam, and its body is the Mahat principle, Swami says. Mm. The Mahat principle uh, is part of the Vijnana Mai Kosha, if from but I, I was trying to find it, but I couldn't. Uh, but I think that's something which we can. So it is the intermediate principle from which the earth itself is born, from the uh, sky itself is born, space Great. itself. Is born. Greatness. So, great. I, 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 ah, the I think Kalyani has put the source. Got it, yeah. Okay. Maybe you can just. Okay, and you can read that Mahat principle. In the Taitriya Upanishad, which is one of the important among the ten principal Upanishads, the buddhi is described as a bird. Shraddha, faith, is the head of the bird. 
Its right wing is rhythm, the cosmic rhythm, and its left wing is satyam, truth. The main body of the bird is Mahatattva, the great principle. Its tail is called yoga. The buddhi, in its complete form, is thus composed of five constituents and is extraordinarily powerful. So, so Swami refers to it as buddhi also. In the beginning, you know, we, we did it. It's buddhi that is. Please roll down a little bit, uh, Kalyani. Roll down. Go oh, down. Ah, and that's it, that's it, that's it. No, no, little bit. Ah, there, there. In the Taitri Upanishad, which is one of the important among the 10 principles of Upanishad, the buddhi is described as the bird. The main portion of the, the main part of the bird is buddhi. And Shraddha is the head. Yeah. I think uh, we had also discussed uh, when, when we were doing Prashnotra Vahini in the other study circle, another discourse, or maybe in the same discourse, Swami saying, what is the Mahat Tattva? It is the recognition by the buddhi of the true nature of the self. Mm, yeah. Can you repeat Kalyani once more? Uh, what is Mahat Tattva? It is Mahat. the recognition by the buddhi of the true nature of the self. Thank you. So, uh, brother, then the, the buddhi is much, is a subtler than the akasha. So it's a it's a where we are getting from the connected to the Brahma, that's a jiva art, jivatma kind of. Oh, no, no. So, so I think your question is mm -hmm. this Mahat principle which Swami is discussing. See the buddhi also there's in the mental sphere also there is buddhi, which Swami has covered in the later on. Okay, but the Mahat principle is the father of, of the parent of all these and within that there's a buddhi that is the original buddhi principle it's like um, paramatman and jivatman you know so the buddhi which we refer to is okay. the buddhi aspect of the mind okay. but when swami says buddhi from the mahat principle as kalyani said swami says that's the recognition of the true self okay that's the knower, you know, the knower should know that I am the knower of the Brahman, you know, who which knows. That link is the one which is uh, Mahat. Oh, that understanding is much subtler than the, all the five elements, closer subtler, to the Paramatma. Yeah. Subtler than the mind also. So, mind also, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, because some of these principles, you know, it, they cross between koshas also. I think we had discussed Anna, Anna, Ananda Maya Kosha, Vijnana Maya Kosha. So this is Vijnana Maya Kosha, where you know that you are the true self. But then there's a buddhi in the Mano Maya Kosha also, which is the buddhi which we use for discriminating this and that. I think that's, Kalyani, you read, no, is it written here, Kalyani, or no, you are just some other notes? Uh, this part is just the the principal true nature. Oh, that I, I had taken other notes as well. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay. I do. I don't know, Uncle, if it, because I did have a summary. Because I did, if you wanted to read the whole first chapter, it might take a while. Do you think it, we can go through the whole first chapter? Okay, or if you have a summary, if you have a summary, why don't we read that? As to, I think that's more. Then it will become otherwise it'll become another study circle. <laughs> What what somebody has got? Oh. So it, we read up to here with the Akasha. Yeah, correct. This Antar Indriya. Uh, from there, you have to study a thing. A read. Okay, Kalyan, yeah. just read it, then we'll just yeah. discuss. Maybe, Uncle, you could just, um, because okay. you could okay. the explanation and. Yeah. That's fine. So, as you can see, the sky, the space principle has formed. Nyata, Manas, Buddhi, Chitta, Mahankaram. Yeah. Okay. So five. So actually what it basically means is 
each of the element actually intermingles with another element. Okay, the space with fire, space with wind, space with water, space with prithvi is supposed to make these fi five principles, which are actually predominantly space principles. Then Swami says, Vayu, Vayu is the wind. Basically, it's made of all the five pancha pranas. Prana, Swami starts with Samana, Vyana, Udana, Prana, and Apana. Okay, as you can see, Apana is downward movement, the grossest of the pranas. So that has the most earth principle. Then Prana is the life giving one energy, which is Vayu with certain uh, water principle. Um, then Vayu with, Vayu with fire principle is Udana, the fire, the in, uh, prana which one of the pancha prana which rises up goes up then there's that's the prana which spreads everywhere vyana one of the pancha prana that has the water element along with the wind so it spreads everything samana is equilibrium that is it is balanced it's only space and why you are capable of that samana okay that principle then fire principle, Swami says, all the five indriyas, senses, the perception, which is ear, hearing, which is ear with space element. Ear with, uh, fire with wind is the faculty of touch. Fire with, uh, uh, fire, with fire is eye, your eyes sight. Fire with taste, fire, the fire with water is the ability to taste. Fire with the uh, earth is the ability to smell, nose. Okay. Then Swami says, Jala, the water principle also again has multiple. That sound, touch, form, taste, smell. So this is what is actually taken in by the Indriyas. Can you, can you, Dasan, can, can you, can you, can you, I'm able to mute him. I think you can. Aliani, can you mute? Uh, yeah, I've done so. Thank you. So, so the fire principles, all of our sensory organs which are taking in information is the fire principle. What we take in or the sensation itself is sound, touch, form, smell. They are called Tanmatra. They are the water principle with each of the five elements. And Prithivi is the five, uh, earth element. Swami equates them to Karmendriyas, which is uh, speech is air, sorry, the space and Prithivi. Uh, hands is uh, Prithivi principle, that's earth principle with wind, which makes us move. The earth principle with fire is feet. I think we had some confusion, I think, no, Kalyana, I think. We had some issue, but the earth principle with water is our gener generative organ. And the earth principle with earth is the excretory organ. So these are the Karmendriyas. They are all the principle of uh, earth. So as you can see, um, then you know we go into other. Ex I think we will leave this out. There are further discussion in Karmendra because just to tell you all what the twenty-five principles. Are, I said you can just show the gross body along. So as you can, the twenty-five principles which are active in our waking state are the five Karmendriyas, five Tanmatras, five Jnanendriyas, five Pranas. And the Jnata, Manas, Bhutti, Chitta, Mahakar. These are the 25 principles. I think in Sankhya Yoga, the 24 principles are everything minus Jnata. Yeah, at last. Jnata, yeah, the, yes. the Sankhya principle, which Auntie mentioned, has these 24 principles. That is Karmendriya, Tanmatra, Jnanendriya, Pranas, and Manas, Bhutti, Chitta, Mahakar. The Jnata is the Atman itself, which is the 25th principle. 
which is everything else is an atma the 25th principle is atma yeah okay so this in a gist i think we'll go back to get the vine if everyone is okay i have got table form in the in which you know if can you see can you see it uh, I can see, Auntie, but you have to move it towards your left a little bit, Auntie. Okay, a little bit. Uh, like yeah, okay. that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I think you can just read it out, Auntie, if it's okay. Uh, I think uh, the first the first things, five things full, he shows, okay. five elements. Then he says, make it into half. Half, 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 half. Oh, I see. Then, yeah, then, you know, the upper portion are all, you know, half is intact. Of all yes. the elements, yes. of all the elements, five, half of the half fire, ayo, half akasha, half vayu, uh, um, half water, half fire, and uh, half everything half. Up. And the next half has got one eight, one eight, one eight principle of all the other elements. So this is the. I hope okay. you see it. Yes, yes, Andy, but it's not ah. very clear. Yeah, you can see clearly that. No, no, no. The first black portion is the full half of each element. And yes, each sir. element is combining with the other four elements. Okay, yes, auntie, yes. Yeah, that's what he is showing. That's, this that's Panchikarana. Panchikarana, that's what I'm, to make it simple. So the thing is that we, we looked at the 25 principles. Actually, these 25 principles also, there's multiple, much more which happens. Yeah. Uh, as Auntie said, you know, there's one eighth, one eighth, one eighth of each of one them eighth, also combined. All the things, it comes together. We only looked at one plus one so far, half half. But then there's much more. That is the way the entire creation happens, is what uh, Sankhya Yoga says. Panchikarana means only that, that half of every element combined with the other four elements. Sister I Aruna, I think you went. <laughs> Aruna. Brother, if, uh, auntie, if uh, there is no contact with the elements only, that that space is the 25th element, uh, thing is coming, right? Every element, so then they combine and uh, have those uh, nyayendriyas, kamendriyas, all these kind of things come. But only when the nova is come, the 25th one has no contacts with the, um, uh, this is my understanding, I'm thinking to myself, right? So then only, uh, I think uh, when there is no contact with the elements only, the Mahat principle or Nana and the Nata will come there, right? Whatever I know, I have I just shared it with you people. One half full of Akasha, one eighth of Vayu, one ninth of fire, one eighth of water, one eighth of Prithvi. That completes the whole thing. That so every element, even if you take Akasha. It has got the other four elements also mixed with it. If you take fire, the other four elements also in it, mixed in it. So that is why 5 into 5, 25, that's what. But Swami, as he says, the 25th principle is the knower, nata. Uh, I don't know where no to contact with any that, element. That's, I don't know where to put this. That has no contact with any elements. Yeah, no, no. Not, sister. Jata is one of the Highest. elements. One of the elements. One of the elements. Yes, yes. See, this is all part of the creation. Okay. This is part of creation. So in the path of creation, everything is made of five elements. See, the thing is, sometimes we think Atman is separate and the elements are separate, which is not yeah. so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Atman, you say Atman is present even in the elements. They are all, see, that's what Swami is, you know, is, so I'm saying, even the elements are created, they are made, created using the Atman only. There's no other substance in this world. So it's Atman which has become the elements. So that's only it. the way it's a differentiation by the knower, knowing that. Okay. Thank you. 
it's not an it's unaffected by the elements but it is part of the elements that is right okay unaffected unaffected okay It's like the clay. I think Swami has already talked about the clay and the pot. Clay is unaffected by the pot. Pot can break. So clay is never broken. In the pot also, the clay is there. But uh, pot doesn't exist in the clay. <laughs> or something like that. Okay. So as Swami said, they derive the strength and support from the unseen. That's what it says. All things of which we are a manifestation of a thing. So the last sentence is Swami saying, which is what I'm repeating. All things of which we are aware are but manifestations of a thing of which we are unaware. They derive their strength and support from the unseen. That unseen basis of which you are unaware is I, myself, the Atma. All are based on me. Shall we proceed then, Kalyan? I think it's, I hope... Uh... That which is based is subject to change, growth, decline, and modification. But the base or adhara should not therefore be taken as subject to change. For example, consider the moon and its reflection in water. The image of the moon in the water is not steady. It shakes and quivers. It is the water that shakes and quivers not the moon above. Ignorant people who are like children infer that the moon is itself shaking. The transference of the characteristics of the adheya on the adhara is the fundamental asuric quality. The recognition of the eternality and truth of the adhara, even in the adheya, that is the real daivi sampati. God directed nature. Arjuna listened intently and with steady attention to all this. Then he queried, Madhava, you said that it is the inherent quality of nature that distinguishes these two. Which qualities make for Asuric and which for Daivi na natures? Please clarify. Krishna replied, Arjuna, I am ever willing to clarify. I only need listeners who are steady and intent. Hear this with unwavering attention. 1. Fearlessness. 2. Purity of emotions. 3. Awareness of the unity of all creation. 4. Charity. 5. Control of the senses. 6. Sacrifice. 7. Study. 8. Asceticism. 9. Straightforwardness. 10. Nonviolence. 11. Integrity. 12. Equanimity, absence of anger or resentment. 13. Detachment. 14. Inner peace. 15. Refraining from scandal mongering and talking ill of others. 16, sympathy. 17, absence of greed. 18, sweetness and softness of speech. 19, fear of adharmic acts. 20, absence of fluctuation in the mind. 21, courage during disaster, patience and fortitude. 22, steadiness. 23, cleanliness, 24, harmlessness, 25, humility. These 25 holy qualities are the traits of Daivi Sampati, the divine endowment. Okay, thank you, Kalyani. Maybe, Auntie, shall we read Telugu? Uh, 
Mati, you are muted. Sorry. I should read it from here, I think. Atti adharame nenu atma. That is last sentence, you know, Swami said. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sarva deya mulu nannu anusarinchi undunu. All those, all that is dependent on me or is supported by me, they are based on me. Aite, adheya mula yandu konni mark pulu kaluku chundan. But in those which are dependent, there will be some changes. Vikaram. Vikaram lo, kshina vruddu lo kaluku chundan. They will transform or change or they morph, morph into something or they redu, or deplete or they grow. Ante matramu chetane adharamu landu kodanu atti marpulu kalamani bhavin charadu. Just because of that, one cannot un, one cannot think that that which is the support, the basis also has these changes taking place. Machuna kuchudu. Machuna kuchudu. For example. Machuna kuchudu. Akashumanandali chandrudu. Achanchalumuga prakashinchu chundaga. For an example, when the moon is uh, without any movement, is uh, glittering in the sky. Atani pratibimbamu jalamanandu chalinchu chundunu. The reflection of the moon on the water will be incidentally given to shaking. Because of when that which is dependent on which some on the basis when that is moving, what is seen in that will seem to move. Kani Chandrudu but children will think that the moon itself is shaking. Atulane Adheya Mandali Marpulu Adhar Mulo Niru Pinchuta Asuratamu Anyu. Therefore, to consider the basis on the uh, using the qualities of the that which is based is the nature of the asura. So the changes in the, the changes in the thing which is dependent or based on something, taking those uh, qualities or changes and attributing them to the basis is the nature of the asura. Asura. Seeing the, the the qualities of the basis that which supports on that which is dependent in the or based on to see the qualities of the basis on that those things which are based on it is the nature of the divine. Teluputa Daivatvamanyu Anubadano. Yes. The, among the qualities of both these, once the qualities of one is mine, the nature is mine. The second one is my form. My Rend real form. Sorry. Please go ahead. Then my real form. So, so I just want to so to the the state of okay and can you just read it Auntie? don't think it is oh, too without <laughs> thinking that both these are separate or different to see the unity of the real form and the real nature of these two. That is Darshin Chote Veda Vittula Stiti. Veda Vittula Stiti. So to be able to see, witness it or see this, experience it is the uh, state of 
those who understand or know the vedas annitiki guna marpe kani veru marpu kaadu for all these it is the change in the qualities of the characteristics and nothing else ani bhagavanudu telipenu and thus the lord explained arjunudu ati shraddha kudai shraddhaludai madhava daiva daanuvalaku guna marpule kaaranam ani antiri so arjuna who listened to it with great attention said o oh, madhava for both the divine divine and the demonic qualities the qualities the changes in their qualities or characteristics is the reason or cause, cause. that's what you said etti gunamulu kalavaru danavulu the demonic ones what type of qualities do they have etti gunamulu kalavaru daivamshamulaku chendina varu those who have divine aspects in them what are their qualities krupa tho telpumo ani vedukonena kindly explain them to me thus he requested baba nee boti shraddha galavadu chikkavelane kaani telupatuku nen elloppudu siddhamugane undanu oh my brother in law people who are like you who are earnest and sincere really listening that is very uh, that me i am always ready to i am uh, yeah chikka valane kaani i have to is krishna is telling i should be able to get people like you who are good listeners mm. with lot of shraddha and attention but i am ever ready to uh, explain explain achanchala manasudu vai vinumu without uh, having any unwaveringness listen listen to me abhayamo uh, fearlessness chitta shuddhi cleanliness of the chittam gnana yogam unduta having the union with gnana wisdom danamu charity damamu sense control yagnamu sacrifice so for me yagna adhyayanamu study study of uh, scriptures also tapas tapas uh, austerity anti penance penance yeah austerity kapatamu lekuta not have being straight forward not having any uh, manipulative Kapat- tendencies kapatam ante idi one who is uh, acting putting on pretenses yeah ahimsa uh, non non violence satya truth akrodham like uh, absence of hatred or anger tyagam sacrifice shanti peace kondemulu cheppukunduta not uh, saying bad things about other people uh, sometimes kondemulu only things complaints anukuntan that ah. the translation says refraining from scandal mongering or talking oh, okay okay kondemulu samasta pranulu yeda karuna having compassion on all living beings vishayamalandu manasu pokunduta not allowing the mind to dwell on the sensory objects tejasu effulgence kshama forbearance aapatkalamunandu saitamu dhairyamunu viduvakunduta not losing one's courage even at the time of great danger shauchamo cleanliness parulaku droham cheyukunduta not harming others mrudu swabhavam having a very soft and gentle demeanor dharma viruddha karyamulato praveshimpakunduta not engaging in actions which are against dharma chanchala swabhavam lekunduta not having a un- wavering nature ఇటి పవిత్రమైన ఇరవై ఐదు గుణములు 
kalavarile daiva sampatti these 25 qualities are the one if anyone possesses that person is daiva. divine divine i should stop this swami says uh, tells about uh, demonic nature also afterwards yes auntie mm -hmm. So we'll stop here. Anyone who'd like to discuss, please go ahead and share your thoughts. So we know it's now heavy. the 25 qualities. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just thinking. That's It's evident that why we have to take so many janmas to get <laughs> all these things. Now I know. Shivani. <laughs> <laughs> Which one should I wait? Which one should I postpone for the next life, sister? I'm thinking. I'm just kind of <laughs> introspecting. I think I have to start from the first one. <laughs> Fearlessness, you know, up here. You know, all these things, I'm just thinking it at my level. If you practice, it gives you so much confidence that you're not, I mean, you're on the right path. Yeah. When it's, it is so silent, I don't know whether they're, they're taking it in. I'll just. Uh -huh. But I just wanted to clarify one of the sentences. Uh, where it says Adheya Maina Jala Kada Dikache? That sentence, Auntie, if you could just translate that one. Yeah, but, uh, what is it? Adheya? Adeya Maina Jala Kadalika Che. Ah, ah, one minute. Uh, uh, the previous sentence says, uh, the moon, Atani Pratibimbo Jalaman and the Chalichi Sundana. That you understand. Because yeah. the reflection of the moon is moving in the water. Yes. Adeya Maina Jala Kadalika Che. Because Jala is Adeya. Isn't it? Mm. Okay. We feel that actually Adara is also moving. Because we see the reflection of the moon in the water, the water is it is it's moving. So we think the same because Chandra is moon is must be also moving. She thinks. So one is Adhara, one is Adheya. Adheya, you see the reflection. Adhara is moon. So it, there is no movement in the moon. It's only because the um, water moves, so the reflection also moves. Jala kadalika che, movement of water. Because the water, which is the adaya, is moving, the bimba, we think that the bimba is also moving? Is also, bimba ma chalinchu natlu karpinchu sunnadi. It looks like, it looks like as if the bimba is also moving. Oh, okay. So Swami is saying the water is Adeya and the reflection is Adhara? Adhara is Chandra. Chandra, Chandra is Adhara. Adhara is water. Reflection is seen in the Adeya. Atulane Adeya Mandali Marpulu Adhara Muruto Nirupinjuta Asuratvam. That is the reason. Whatever we see the moment in the Adeya, we superimpose it upon Adhara. So, to say that is Asuratva. Saying that this Adhya is moving, so Adhara is also moving, that's Asuratva. Demonic nature. So, and then that, so it says Atulane Adhya Mandali Marpulu, that means it's the Adhya that is changing. Changing. So, Adhara Mulo Nirupinchita, we are trying to prove it on the Adhara, saying that because the water is moving and the reflection is moving, and we, we tend to say, oh, Chandra is moon is also moving. No, it's not. That is Asuratva. Mm. 
if we think so, we are demonic nature. And the opposite, Adharamunandal Nityatvam, steadfastness in Adhara, and Satyatvam, the truth, Adhyam and the Kudnu, Tensukunda. But you, whereas the opposite is uh, Daivika. What do they, what does the Daivi persons think? They say that this Adhara is Nityatvam, Satyatvam. So Adhya is also same. Okay, so because Adhara is Nitya and sat Satya, the yeah. Adhya is also Nitya and Satya? Satya. If you think so, if you if those who think about it, they are Daivatva. They, they have the Saitaitva qualities. Oh, okay. The recognition of the eternality and truth of the Adhara, even in the Adhya, that is the real Devi spirit. So, so, pardon me if I sound like I don't. So, Adhya and Adhya, Adhara, um, that knowledge is given to explain the body and the Atma? Body and Atma. Body is changing. Atma is never changes. Is it? Yeah. So that's that's what. Adara. Uh, okay. Okay. Arun. Sairam. Arun. It's not there. I think uh, Uncle might be. Yes, Santi. Yes, please go ahead. What's the question? Oh, sorry. I just was asking. Yes. The recognition of the eternality and truth of the Adhara, even yes. in Adheya. That's what really Daiva Sympathy says. So. When Adha, yeah, so, so, Adha, so we ability to see the divine in the Adeya. Ah, that's it. That's divine okay. in the Adeya. So, for example, in this world, if we are able to see the divinity in everything, which is after all in the nature, whatever we see, the creation, the ability to see God in everyone, in everything we see, that is Daivi Sampati, is the way I understand it. But... But eternity and truth cannot be in the Adheya. No, the Adheya, see, in, even though the Adheya is there, the, within the Adheya, that, that which energizes the Adheya is the Adhara. Adhara. So it's ability to see the Adhara in the Adheya. In the Adheya, that's all. But yeah. not that Adheya is eternal, Adheya is true. No. No, Adheya is not eternal. But we should be able to see within that yeah. Adheya. Yeah. The divine, same divine principles. For example, if you see another person, we should be we should be able to. The Adheya is all the qualities which we see. You know what the person does and how they look and all that. But within that, I think Swami wants us to see the divinity, which is inherent in everything in this world. The ability to see that Swami says is Daivi Sampati. Is that, but no, little misleading when you say that eternal eternal eternality and the truth are. In Adheya, no. So, no, be. yeah, because no. the Adheya, see, if, if I take another per, uh, person, there is, within that person, there is Sat as well as Asat. Asat. Mm -hmm. The Sat is there, the Atman in each person is eternal. Yeah, that we have to see. Ah, that so that we have to see. Once, if we can see that, then Swami said that is the Ivi Sampati. In Adheya, see that Atman which is eternal and which is truth. Yes, yes. So what that sentence where it says Adeyam Mandu Kudanu Telisukonuta. That means mm. Telisukonuta. Telisukonuta. Even in Ade also to know that. Kudanu means it's it is there also or Adeyam even in even in Adeya. Even in Adeya. The also, also, yeah. also Kalyani, also is kudan. Oh, okay. So, so Adhara Munandari Nityam Satyam. So, so the Adhara is Nityam Satya, and the Adhaya also know that. Is that what it says? Oh, Auntie, are you? Auntie, you're muted. No, actually, sentence says like that, but what? Arun is saying 
eternal and truth, eternality and truth is there in Atman, which is present in everything. Every manifestation, it has the divinity. Recognize that divinity. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. See, Kalyani, if you take the elements which Swami has said is Adeya, okay, they are all dependent on the Adhara. So even if, if you take a human body, in the human body, the elements are present. But the forms which it takes, they take can sometimes change. Mm -hmm. But however, the underlying elements are also permanent. Mm -hmm. The atoms don't change. The atoms are eternal, but they just come up, you know, come together and form different shapes, molecules, and so on. So even that thing which is continuously changing, there is an element of permanence. Uh -huh. The elements are eternally present. However, the shapes they form can change. Okay. Okay, the, the shapes. So, but what happens? We get attached to the temporary shape which has been formed by these eternal elements. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so even in the in the worldly sense, there is some permanence in the elements. Okay. Because they never get destroyed. The elements, if, when a person dies, the elements go back to their natural state. Mm. But temporarily, they, uh, they created a certain form. With that temporary form, we are attributing as a permanent thing, which is not right. Mm. But if you look at the underlying elements, they are permanent. Mm. Okay. But even we don't even see that. That is sometimes Swami says, oh. the, West, the scientists call something atom, the Vedantic scientists call it the Atma. Mm. Okay. So, the atom is eternal. Okay. So, I hope that... Uh... That clarifies. Okay, sir. Tyram, you know, I may not be able to actively participate, but others, so you can, auntie, and you had to just continue the discussion without, I will be just listening and coming in as required. Oh, auntie, you're muted. Yeah, auntie, you're muted. Until and unless this dissolution takes place, <laughs> complete pralaya, only then these elements are gone. Otherwise, the basic uh, things which exist in the elements, they will continue even though it's taking other shapes. That's what Arun said just now. Why? Pardon me. What? Aruna? You know, I was thinking about the pralaya. Uh, you think at that stage all the five elements gone? Kind of? No. When uh, pralaya takes place, everything is dissolution. All the elements, all the things, whatever is there, everything will go into the or origin, source. It will go back to its source. From the source it has come, it will go back in dissolution. Hmm. Until then, what Arun is saying just now is, in all the five elements, the basic thing will be remaining. That's Atman. Yeah. Uh, elements have come from Atman only. Yeah, Adara will remain. Adara. It will be always there. So, can can we say the person, the Devi Sampati, Devi? Devi Sampati. Yeah, to have all these five um, qualities or characteristics, then, then one can understand the truth of Adhara, to see the Adhara in the Adheya. Not all the 25 <clears throat> characteristics may be present. You know, you become daivik in nature when you 
follow one quality the other qualities will auto- automatically follow you mm. for example when there is sympathy there will be inner in peace mm. not, you are not afraid of anybody and uh, there will be no gra- greed mm. so one depends on the other so you become basically a daivik person daivik person a, any of these at least three four qualities which we mm, yeah all the 25 qualities as you say if we we have to take several births to <laughs> imbibe mm. all the 25 qualities at least a few of them we can have and then you know we we can see that godliness we, we can see the divinity in the five elements mm-hmm. i mean whatever is there and understand that the basic aadhara is that bhagwan mm, yeah yeah <coughs> sorry aunty number 12 equanimity absence of anger or resentment is that is correct in the telugu version because if that equanimity is there why we are uh, discussing other things like a uh, detachment uh, absence of uh, the uh, patience fortitude and everything absence of greed and all. the equanimity so is that is the number 12 has been said that equanimity absence of anger no when, when you are angry with some person you know so you get angry this talking you... about only the anger power part uh in in, in uh, swami's akrodha mohi says no no question of getting angry akrodha krodha means anger yeah. akro no anger that's all is given here here he is added these things you know saying that uh, yeah because and, because yeah, is anger. one by one the equanimity is not supposed to be no aruna telugu swami says akrodamo akrodamo ah, akrodamo okay. no so more no, no absence of anger okay absence of anger yeah so okay great thanks <laughs> because i'm thinking about the equanimity is uh, you have reached to that why so uh, he's talking all these things thanks. absence of anger or resentment that yes. would have been a... yes thank you enough we show equanimity when it is when the opposites are there somebody is praising you somebody is angry with you at yeah. both positions you to you show equanimity there you show see the 25 qualities now we are seeing it before we are seeing with the um, elements right one by one is attached and then five and three as this how now this is relating that to this kind of i'm just thinking about that how this five elements one you know how that five things formed and here the 25 these are all characters not of... something is it compared to something is i i think that these characteristics belong to a person who has the divine qualities in him but those 25 5 into 5 elements that was different that was different am i right different. yeah yeah that was quite different it has no connection yeah, that's what i mean these are all human nature right from beginning fearlessness emotion awareness of unity of creation these are these qualities should be present in a person who is a daivi sampatti the one who has got the, the Uh, um, this divine qualities he expresses these emotions why then they, we were, why then we were comparing that 25 here no, no comparison aruna no nowhere it is said comparison swami is just saying these are the qualities of the divine qualities swami said you know in the beginning those who see the uh, aadhara and aadhe taking that nityatvam satyatvam nityatvam the eternity and satyatvam is truth these two qualities who see in the aadhara also can recognize the same thing in adheya also 
that there that that paragraph ended afterwards swami is, is in the characteristics of a person who can possess these qualities okay, okay. two different uh, things yeah thank you thank you for the clarification Saira. Saira. Uh, the last question, theory. Uh, the three qualities like Rajasik, Tamasik, and Tatvik. Yeah. They are influencing along with the element. Then you 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 you, you keep changing, you know, from one to the other, like from Tatvik to Rajasik and then or then you go to Tamasik. So these these three things are always changing. So so the uh, these things like if the, most of these are Satvic qualities, what is it? Fearlessness, purity of emotions. So, so they the three gunas, they mix with the elements, they are also introduced and then each person becomes different. They are Gopal or Is it Gopal? No, I think Sai, somebody. No, Auntie. Brother Go Gopal Uncle was talking to you before. OK. It was brother Gopal Uncle no? was yeah. talking to Gopal Uncle. Are you there? No, Sai, it was written. I don't know whether it's written. But voice remember resembled as Gopal. Yeah. But actually, those uh, uh, Sattva just go Thomas he is referring to this what we learned about those Panchi Karna was all grossification, it's called. Panchi karna means grossifying. First tanmasa, subtle elements came out. All the five subtle elements came out from the uh, sattvic quality. But rajasic quality and tamas, tamasic quality made all these changes, grossification. That's what he's, he's uh, referring to here. When I, I will show you, show you that uh, table, it says the tamasic quality, which was in the prakriti, Prakriti has all the three qualities. It changes, interchanges. From the tamasic quality, only these uh, grossification took place. That's what the book says here. So here, these qualities, they all belong to sattvic nature. Fearlessness, purity of emotion, awareness of unity. All these are sattvic nature. I don't know. All the Dhanindriyas and the Antakarana were born out of sattvic nature, the elements. And Rajasic quality uh, results in the Karmendriyas. And Tamasic quality require, um, ends up in all this uh, grossification of all the five elements. Okay. What is the nature of four fifteen? Uh, Auntie, but we're, um, under Dhammamu, it says here, Bahyendriya Nigrahamu. Does that mean control of outward senses or something? Bahyendriya Nigrahamu. Yeah, Dhammamu. Dhamma is called Bahyendriya Bahyendriya is... Senses, sense organs, senses. 
is it like outward senses or something like that? It is that. D does it refer to like outward or something like that? Bahi outward. All the senses which are going outside, externally oh. based. Those in the, actually senses are going, all the five senses are going only outside to collect information, isn't that? Yes. That's why it's called Bahindriya. Antariya is the Tantakarana. Karachita Indri inner equipments. Inner mm -hmm. instruments. Outer instruments are these five. Sensor yeah. Like the karma indriyas and yana indriyas? Uh, they also come under uh, bahya indriyas only. Because grasping, walking, genital and uh, excreta, these are all bahya indriya only. Mm. So basically, Swami, what he is saying here is, Madhava, you said that it is the inherent quality of nature that distinguishes these two. Inherent qualities of human beings here, which makes us asuric or daivik. So it's very clearly said, said here, these qualities which are found in us, these 25 sattvic qualities and the other Swami is going to give about the Daivi, uh, sorry, Asuri qualities. Demonic qualities also is going to give afterwards, uh, after this paragraph. In fact, uh, I think in the later chapter, only the full chapter is devoted only to this Asuri and Daivi nature. Daivi Asuri Sampati. And they will read. Sorry, me. Sorry, Aruna. Well, the next paragraph is uh, uh, the Asuri quality is going to come, right? You, yeah, well, let us read it. Kalyani, if yes. you can read. <clears throat> Pride, pomp, vanity, anger, harshness, and absence of discrimination are the components of the Asuric endowment of man. Persons having these qualities are infused with the asuric character. Mm -hmm. Though for all outward appearance they may be humans, they do not deserve that name. Those who have the aforesaid qualities are known as men with divine parts. Those who have the asuric attributes are known as dhanavamanavas, demonic humans. Mm -hmm. Maybe should I stop there, auntie? I think we should stop here. Let me read that. Uh, um, okay. Dambam, that is pride. Garvam. Um, garvam is to uh, pride. Pride is garvam. Dambam is vanity. Vanity. Durbimanam. One's own, uh, you know, having a very uh, abhimana, but selfish nature of his own abhimana, kopamu anger, parulunu pirinche laguna vanchinche subamu. Those who have got this bad nature of uh, um, uh, torturing others, pirinche laguna vanchi. Then vanchinche subamu. Those who cheat others, and vivek gnana gnana hinata. Those who lose, they don't have the discrimination. Ityadi Durgunamulu, Kalavarno, Danvam Shamani, and Duro. So they are called uh, demonic nature. Akaramuna Manu Lavale Kanipinchunanta Matramuna, those though they look like human beings. When they look at the external uh, uh, form of them, you feel that they are all look they look like humans, but Manu Lukaleru, they cannot become human beings. Ani Madhudu. He told him. And he says, Dhanava Manava. He, they, though they are called Manavas, they are Dhanavas. Dhanava Manavas. 
आसरिक नीच है डेमिनिक ह्यूमंस या सो आंटी वी हैव दानवाज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स टू या या हियर इज दैट्स वन प्राइड पॉम्प vanity anger harshness absence of discrimination these are all the asuric qualities so we have those <laughs> we have no doubt about it we have <laughs> no i'm just thinking as a human like yeah human we quality. came we came that or we developed those some of them were inherent in us but as a baby we don't see any pride or anger or anything this i think we develop it later on and uh, depending on the <clears throat> atmosphere where we are brought up and some of parabda part, and the in, parabda as well right some, that has some of them are inherent it just pops up and then it takes strength <laughs> but, yeah some people okay. known to have a lot of anger you know some they bring along with them when they are born the tarsus think we have yeah we have talk about they are like weeds so you keep taking them pluck keep yeah. plucking them okay yeah, it's exactly that like weeds they are all weeds but are we plucking them <laughs> that's a long story but <laughs> but i was just thinking does the human like they they born with that or they developed because of you know of course with the janmas and praravdas your karmas there are so many other factors yeah. which yeah. which yeah. kind of shape you in different manner right uh, okay so we can minimize this and increase the devi uh, some quality some okay some so some of us we have the inherent qualities of and uh, parenting also makes hmm. a, when we nature see and so nature and, and nurture both right nurture both nurturing is hmm. all hmm. hmm kalyan you want to read another paragraph Shanti. Sure, oh, uh, Sister Vasudha raised her hand. Okay. Hi Ram. Um, okay. I just wanted to say that in the uh phylogenetics there's something called epigenetics which is like we are all born with uh, certain genetic material that we inherit from our um parents and ancestors. But there's also a lot of influence on the environment. So actually yeah. studies have shown if they were identical twins who got separated at birth for whatever reason and then years later they uh, were able to get hold of these twins and study the characteristics there are certain characteristics which are uh, genetic and did not get modified by the environment mm. there are certain characteristics mostly personality related so physical related like uh which they call as phenotype so if your height color of your eyes or color of the hair those things environment may not influence but personality how you react to environment can be very much influenced by how you um are brought up what you see around you what you witness actually there's this funny hindi movie called amar akbar anthony where yeah yeah, yeah i know <laughs> that movie <laughs> <laughs> but there is some truth to it that environment does influence your uh, genetic but yeah. also not just the personality they've seen in animals in let's say you take an animal like a tropical animal and you bring it to a climate which is uh, let's say arctic climate then there are certain changes in the genes that happen mm -hmm. so that's like how much the environment the circumstances and how we grow up can influence what we were born with but i think swami is telling us to use our discrimination to figure okay this is the environment but if you have that sense of discrimination then you can figure out what you should which path you should follow sara 
So while we are young, you know, we don't know how to discriminate between this one. That, that. There, you know, the parents' uh, responsibility comes in. They can tell. Parents can tell the children, this is not the correct thing, this is the right way. So uh, mostly, as you say, uh, our genetic uh, habits and genetic uh, characteristics will be with us. But to nurture them or to see that if it is wrong, the parents' responsibility comes in there. And however much you may influence, but children are, they develop their own, uh, when they grow old, they have got their own ideas and they develop their own character. Okay. I think it's 4.26 uh, Kalyani. Can we just close here now? or? Sure, huh? I think. Okay. Yes. Arun uncle has gone, I think. He must have left some sir. Anyway. Shall we pray? Yes, Uncle. You can go ahead and close. Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu. Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu. Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu. Om Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Harhi Om Sri Krishna Arpanastu. Sai Ram. Thank you. Thank you, Antu. Thank you so much.